Greenwich, 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 Это они называют Манхэттеном Лондона. And Canary Wharf does look like a miniature New York City. Canary Wharf was built on the Isle of Dogs, which supposedly got its name because King Henry VIII kept his royal kennels here. The Isle of Dogs is really less an island than a peninsula formed by a long, bowing curve of the Thames. With 100,000 men. All of that changed in the 70s. The shipping industry began using giant container ships, which were too big to navigate up the Thames. Shipping moved to other ports, and Docklands was abandoned. The old walls rotted away, while the city wondered what to do with all of this valuable property. Then London emerged as a command centre in the new global economy. The financial service industry demanded less expensive office space in the city. At last, the government saw an opportunity. It founded the London Docklands Development Corporation, an organization that offered tax incentives to anyone willing to build a Canary Wharf. It was a hard sell at first. Londoners thought Canary Wharf was in the middle of nowhere. Gordon Ramsay on television. Why not sample their new cuisine My favorites are women chefs like Angela Hart, who's a little taste of Italy in everything she cooks. And Thomasina Mears, who brought the flavors of Mexican street food to London. In fact, some of the best food in London today is served right on the street. Farmers markets bring the delicacies from around the world. And for real value, look for a good food truck. I'm not kidding. London food trucks serve a lot more than hot dogs these days. Instead, you can tear into scrumptious specialities made with fresh local ingredients and sold at prices no restaurant can match, like Jamaican jerk chicken, Japanese-style macaroons, and American Southern-style barbecue. Don't let all this multi culty talk scare you away from traditional English food. For my money, there's absolutely nothing better than good fish and chips. In the early days of the Port of London, ships were anchored in midstream. Lighter men, or freight carriers, unloaded the ship's cargo onto barges. Between ship and shore, pirates and smugglers sometimes robbed the lightermen's barges. Many of these criminals hatched their schemes at the prospect of Whitby, London's oldest riverside pub. Located on the north bank, it remains a London landmark. Look for a small three-story white building with a terrace facing the river. 
beside a weeping willow tree. A hangman's noose dangles over the terrace. A reminder of the prospect of Whitby's criminal past, when it was known as the Devil's Tavern. You'll meet a much nicer crowd there today. In a few minutes, we'll see an example of how completely Docklands has changed since the glory days at the Port of London. Full speed. The Thames Rush experience takes you past incredible views of London to Canary Wharf, or blast all the way to the Thames Barrier on the Thames Max experience. Thames Jet is perfect for stag and hen parties. And we're licensed to thrill for corporate A-teams on our unforgettable river raids. We provide experienced skippers and waterproof clothing. Ask any crew member about Tempsjet, the acrobatic ride of your life. of yellow brick buildings on the South Bank used to be called London's Larder. Most of the city's food was unloaded there from ships that sailed from every corner of the globe to the port of London. Just past Butler's Wharf, a narrow inlet marks the district known as Jacob's Island. In the 1800s, this was London's worst slum. Charles Dickens described Jacob's Island in his novel Oliver Twist. Where the buildings on the backs are dirtiest, and the vessels on the river blackest with the dust of colliers and the smoke of close-built, low-roofed houses, there exist the filthiest, the strangest, the most extraordinary of the many localities that are hidden in London. The most extraordinary. Of When we sail on the Tower Bridge, we will enter the ancient city of London, known as the Square Mile. The city of London on the North Bank is a city within a city. It's the oldest part of London where the Romans built Londinium in the first century. They surrounded it with a wall that remained there until the 1700s. Later, William the Conqueror built a fortification at the eastern end of the wall. This became the Tower of London, the ancient stone fortress with four dome turrets. The main span of Tower Bridge opens in the centre to let tall ships sail through. The bridge also has an overhead walkway added, so pedestrians could cross when the bridge was up. Today, that walkway has as part of the Tower Bridge yeah. exhibition, where you can learn more about the world famous bridge and enjoy incredible views of London from 42 metres or 138 feet above the River Thames. The HMS Belfast is permanently moored along the south bank. This gigantic grey and blue British warship is now...